is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 1st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Excuse me. More important than that, though, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And then in our Tigers Den, well, any ping will do, but I prefer the private one. It's just easier for me to keep track of what your requests are. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you got the all the USNCs trading to the downside. Dow's off 286, about nine tenths percent. S and P's out one percent or 39 points. Nasdaq 109 tenths, 117 points. Russell a little over one percent or 21. Semis off two percent, 66 points. Trend is off one percent, 142 points. Spot Volatilix is trading just below its 50-day exponential moving average. It's trading at 27.16. That would be bullish for the S and P 500. Gold's up three bucks. Silver's up 27 cents. Lights Recruit is up two dollars and thirteen pennies. She's trading at one sixteen, or one sixteen eighty. Natural gas is up fifty seven cents. Trading at eight seventy one. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you got Amazon thirty five bucks. Uh, you've got uh, Salesforce up fifteen. Laredo Petroleum up thirteen. Service now is up ten. To the downside, Booking Holdings thirty three bucks. Followed by Mercado Libre at thirty two dollars. That's four percent to the downside. MicroStrategy off twenty eight and change about eleven percent. Albi Amaral is off 24 bucks or 9%. Alta Beauty down 19 bucks, 4%. So we've got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No request as we speak just yet. Oh, I take that back. There's one that has come in. Let's go. Um, okay, that's uh, about an individual equity. Let's go take a look at the general markets out here, get a feel for what they're doing. We'll change over and take a look. Actually, let's just do this here. Let's go one by one through them. When I mean through them, I'm referring to the futures contract. So we're going to take a look at the ES Mini. To begin with, upper left-hand side is the daily chart out there. We can see that price, nice rallies, run right up into resistance. What That was the top of its daily profile. It's at 41.68. Uh, if uh, price pulls back further, then its target should become the center of its bullish structured profile and or its oscillator and change line. Both of those are at about the 39.89 area. Five-hour time frame chart. I don't have any kind of a topping signal. Price, should, But no levels of support have been broken. The key level first there would be 40.61. The 120 minute time frame chart. Um, I don't have, I feel the top was wave number seven. That's letter G out there. That's part of, very small part of the Chapman wave out there. But we can see that top. Uh, price may be targeting its breakout level of 40, 51, 50. That's coming from the two hour time frame. 60 minute chart, nothing out here to help us out that I can see uh, that uh, quickly. Nothing on the 30 minute chart out here. TD9 count on the 15 minute. Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the 10 minute chart. Uh, same thing on the five minutes. So we know that. So the question, so when we have these intraday time signals, five, 10, 15 minute, what we want to really do is watch resistance levels to assist us with what the next move may be. Well, the five minute chart price is testing that level of resistance as we speak right now, 4094. We're trading at 4094. Price closes above that on a five minute bar, tells us we had higher. 
head higher to where? Well, I look for the next resistance level. I don't see one on a 10-minute chart, but I do on the 15, and that would say then 41.13 would become the price target if price is able to close above that five-minute profile. I take that back, 41.10 would be the level. That's the TD9 count breakdown level for the ES Mini on this rally that is transformed, uh, that is unfolding as we speak. Now I say rally, could just be a counter trend move, folks. And here is what you'd pay attention to those short term time frame charts for those signals. Let's go take a look at the NQ out here. Uh, take me just a moment here to get this to populate. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, uh, futures trading right now at, uh, where are they? So there we go. It's up by, by 12, 538. So that's a uh, beautiful 12, 541 is where they're trading. I think this is, needs to just update these charts out here. Uh, so that is uh, so yesterday and on Friday where price found resistance was inside that bearish structured daily profile. Bearish in structure because the center where you have both buyers and sellers, we'll call it 50, 50 there. 100 percent sellers at 12, 90, 985 because the center is closer to the top than is the bottom, which is 11, 875 bearish in structure. More sellers in that range. Well, so prices hit resistance. No topping pattern like the uh, ES Mini for its five-hour time frame chart. Um, and price just consolidating with inside its profile. The uh, two-hour time frame chart, this also had wave number seven, letter G. That was at the high at about 6 o'clock in the uh, morning. That was 6 o'clock in the morning on the May on May 30th out here. Um, price could be targeting 12,244. That's its breakout level. That's for the two-hour time frame. As we take a look at these charts out here, very similar, 15-minute, 10-minute, 5-minute, also have bottoming signals. So therefore, what are we going to want to watch for? Well, I'd say we're watching the 15-minute chart at this stage here. And the reason is because price has traded up into resistance. That's a 12,549. So if you were to see a close above 12,549, that tells us that we have higher price. Higher price to where? Excellent question. The answer would be 12,643.50. That would then become the next price target. So watch 12,549. So far, it's held there as resistance. Or as resistance. A close above that is then going to suggest the 12,643 area becomes a target. Let's go take a look at the Dow equity future contract out here. The Dow equity future contract. And what we'll do probably after this segment, um, uh, we'll take a look at the TAS market breath out there. I believe it's still bullish for the daily time frame out here. We take a look at the Dow equity future contract. It did close above yesterday and on Friday, the top of its daily profile. So now it's getting back inside. So was the breakout a false breakout? If price closed above 32,875, the answer to that is no. If it closes below that, the answer to that is yes. Price may be pulling back to about the 32,002, 32,012 level out there. It's intraday time periods, 15, 10, and 5 minute. The 15 minute and the 5 minute have bottoming signals. So what are we going to watch for? I say 32,711. The price closed about 32,711. You should see it move to 32,804. That's coming from the Dow. Let's finish this off here pretty quickly. See if we can get the uh, Russell 2000 here before we go to the uh, break. Uh, it, too, had, I believe, closed above the top of it. Yeah, it not only closed above the top of its daily profile, it's been above it for the last four trading days. So the pullback in the Russell 2000 may just simply be an old test of resistance at 1824 level. If price gets below that, then you could be looking at 1788. On its short-term time frame charts out here, it's the 5 and the 15-minute chart. Uh, that, uh, so watch 1848.80. If price closes above 1848.80, you've got rally on. For the Russell 2000. That's what's going on on the four equity future contracts. This is Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. We'll be back in just a few. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to the uh, first question, the only question that we've got at this stage here from Dennis G. Dennis G. writes in, he says, uh, what do the charts say about the waste management? WM is a ticker symbol there. You own it now. Thanks, Dennis G. So, Dennis, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, uh, what you'll see out here, there was a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top led to a test of support. It's bullish structured monthly profile. It was down at 140.08. Now, price is just consolidating with inside that profile. It's still below its green oscillator and change line, 162.16. So I can't make the call that it's going to run up to the 168.04 level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it formed, uh, looks like, wave number seven and a TD9 count top on April the 29th. So far, that has led to a pullback with price still remaining above the top of its profile. So its message, even though it's got a topping signal out here, Dennis, is neutral. If price gets below 149.80, then you can see a pullback to the 143.16 level. So neutral on the weekly, consolidating on the monthly, and the daily, which formed a Rogemintum indicator top, I don't have a bottoming pattern. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. It means I don't have a bottoming pattern. And right now, price is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that is from the range of 155.74 to 161.70. So you're long. What you're really looking for here is uh, first a close of 161.70. That would then get us to the 168.04 level. And then finally, what you would want to see is a close above the high, which is at 170.18 out there. On the intraday charts, Dennis, I wish I had more to share with you. There's not really a ton of information that I see. Nothing worthwhile to uh, just spew information out here that is meaningless. So I won't. So with regard to what the charts are saying here, the uh, daily uh, may have bottomed, but I don't have a bottoming signal out here. It will have bottomed if you can get a close above resistance for two consecutive sessions. That's 161.70. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Um, Mark D. writes in. And Mark writes in. He says, uh, if you'd be so kind to give me your analysis on Enbridge. ENB, I think, is the ticker symbol out here. Uh, ENB. That's what we're going to go with. But um, let me, I got to check this out on my other system actually, just to make sure I've put in the correct symbol out there. 
because it might not be ENB. ENB. Uh, yeah, okay, perfect. So it is. So it's populated. So let's read the question here. I currently own some shares in the stock on the Canadian exchange, but the charts seem to look a bit different on the Canadian exchange versus the U.S. exchange. Could be a currency thing there, possible. The monthly chart, because this is certainly going to be priced in U.S. dollars. The monthly chart seems to look better on the Canadian exchange, so I'm kind of confused. Could you please give me a quick analysis so I know whether or not to stay put or bail out? So I can only obviously give you what's coming off of the U.S. exchange, or if you didn't know that, I don't have the uh, Canadian exchanges uh, that I've uh, purchased, so I don't have their detail to take a look at it. But most certainly we can take a look at what's going on on the daily time frame, daily, weekly, monthly, and intraday time frame. So first, from a monthly standpoint, this looks pretty darn bullish to me. Whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this, expand out the chart. What I mean by that is simply that price is above the uh, top of its uh, profile. It is above its green oscillator and change line. The month of May was a test and rejection of that green line. So this suggests that price should continue to motor on higher. The weekly time frame chart shows that price is consolidated with inside its weekly profile. That's down at a low of 4202, which was tested about uh, four weeks ago. And now it looks like resistance is going to be tested. That's 4675. So you're looking for a close of 4675 on the end bridge capital. Still looks pretty good out here. No, no real, nothing that I see to be concerned with. Just a consolidation with inside the profile levels. That's on the weekly basis. The daily time frame chart, what do we have out here? Not much. But what we do have is prices above the top of its profile. What I meant by not much is I don't have a bottoming pattern. doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. In fact, with price trading above the top of its daily profile as it has for the last four trading sessions, I'd have to say it is a bottom. But what we do have also is a oscillator and change line that has changed color. Now, typically the way that that pattern will work, not always, but typically the way that that pattern will work is when you get a topping pattern, which could be a TD9 count top. That wouldn't take place. The earliest would be tomorrow. So it would be to Thursday through Tuesday of next week when that pattern could form. After that forms out here, as price makes its way back to its uh, prior swing point high of April the 5th, then you could see retracement or pullback. And that pullback might take you to 45.32. If we look at the intraday charts out here, we've got a TD9 count top on the 195-minute chart. Price is with inside the profile, so it may get down to 45.65 or 45.92, a possibility. Nothing to share with you on the 130 or the 65. The 30-minute chart did form, looks like Rhodes momentum indicator top, and price pulled back to support, and that was its breakout level, 45.94 out there. So overall, your question, you're, you're confused about what the charts are saying on the U.S. exchange versus on the uh, Toronto exchange, perhaps. Uh, I can't answer that, but the uh, monthly chart looks good. The weekly chart also looks good, but you've got resistance at 46.75. The daily chart says you should head higher. I just want you to be cognizant of that change in color on the oscillator and change line, and that says we should see that line and price catch up to each other. I just don't know how it's going to do that. It could be sideways movement while the line moves higher. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. No other questions that I see at this moment. Let me just look here real quickly through the, uh, yeah, I don't see anything. Look at Ruby. No, I don't think that message was for me. So I don't see anything inside the Tigers there. But if you do have a request, please feel free to go ahead and write uh, write your request in. So let's go take a look at, what do we want to take a look at next? Excellent question. So let's do this here. Let's go change back to the black background charts for the moment. Oops, wait, Steve, could you look at what? Can we look at gold? Absolutely. So that's from the seagull out there. And so to look at Goldilocks, let's go ahead and take uh, GC. We're in the August contract out here. Let's get that populated. We'll look at the daily and the intraday time period charts out here for Goldilocks. But what we do know about gold here is that gold uh, got back to the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. The weekly profile for gold, I believe it's 1835. Let me just check on my other system here just to make sure. Give you the right number. Gold, gold, gold. Here we go. Um, uh, I got different profile levels. Well, that was no, that was the weekly profile. So the weekly profile, it's a brand new profile, 1835.20. So price got to that level, Seagull held it, 
And that's positive out there. So if you can't bust it to the downside, what is price going to try to do? Perhaps bust it to the upside. Well, to do that, the upside here is going to be 1879. That is the 1857.30 to 1879. That is the bearish structured portion of its daily profile. So that's your resistance zone. If price can clear 1879, that will be a positive outcome. And that would then suggest to move to 1944. Now, you can't see that on the charts here because I'm looking at the black background chart to give me that next price target level. The five hour time frame chart, although I don't have a bottoming signal, uh, price is above its profile levels. And that suggests it could be making a move, gold that is, to the 1867 area. 120 minute chart, bottom with, uh, looks like wave number seven, that's letter G out there and uh, prices above its profile level so that suggests a further move higher 60 minute chart at a rose momentum indicator bottom resistance there is 1854.40 seagull so that's the key level of resistance the 30 minute chart has rose momentum indicator bottom 1859.70 is the resistance level so hopefully you're writing those numbers down on your pad of paper out there two very short-term topping signals one from the 15 minute chart one from the five minute chart so you could see a pullback retracement but on the 50 minute chart that profile is below price that is a bullish message for that time frame steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back if you want to take advantage of this sector now is the time to subscribe to my gold report the Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow down 247, S&P's off 36. Let's go to our next uh, request from David H. in Tomball, Texas. David writes in, please take a look at Occidental Petroleum. OXY is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Can you give me uh, the support resistance levels for uh, and the oscillator and change line? 
Okay, you got a two question out there. And so it depends on what time frame you're looking at. But here we've got our monthly, weekly, daily time frame charts out here. And we can see on a monthly basis, you've got a TD9 count top that was confirmed as we ended the month of May. Now, if price closes above that, that being the high, and the high right now for Oxy is 74.04, that'll be a strong momentum message. But you do have resistance at 83.35. Oscillator and change line, 42.78. Weekly chart. Oscillator and change line is down at the uh, 65.51, the top of its profile, 60.57. If there were to be a move to the downside, the counter trend move to the downside should find support at 55.22. That's the center of its bearish structured weekly profile. Daily time frame shows a confirmed roads momentum indicator top from yesterday. But price is only pulled back and tested and so far rejected a green oscillator and change line. 68.63, by the way, David. That's level. If price were to close below that, we'd be looking to move potentially back to 64.98 to 6. 6056. TD9 count top on the 195 minute chart, but price is holding support there. Um, if price closes below on this bar right now, and this bar is not going to close until 4 p.m., so if Occidental sells off, closes below 69.96, that probably signals move to 65.94, 62.82. It's not the message right now, just something to be aware of. The 130-minute chart formed a roads momentum indicator top has support at 67.46. The 65-minute chart price pulled back to its breakout level of support, as it did on the 30-minute chart. So I don't have anything else to share with you out there. I would say, so the weekly, I'd really be watching the weekly chart out here for a uh, the weekly and the daily. You know, the weekly says, hey, I'm not done headed higher, but we've got that monthly TD9 count top. You can exceed the high. It depends upon the close. So um, right now, Occidental Petroleum still looks pretty bullish when I look at the monthly, the weekly, and the daily time frame charts out there. There are some caution signals. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Uh, that was David again in Tomball, Texas. Flip, watch, take a look at ticker symbol T-E-R. So let's get that populated on the uh, screen out here. I don't know what T-E-R is, as if I'm supposed to remember all of the uh, uh, stock symbols out there. Teradyne, though, is what uh, we're late. We're going to take a look at here for Flip. And a Teradyne right now is trading out at 106.63. Um, let's let this uh, continue to populate. Is it done? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So now as we take a look at it, it's got a monthly roads momentum indicator top, but price has held support. If price held support being the top of its monthly profile, 96.62, you get below that and you're headed lower, maybe it's 88.84, maybe it's 81.46, maybe it's 56.42. I don't know the answer to that. I just know that right now you've got a top and support has held. The weekly time frame has a roads momentum indicator top. Price below its breakout level. There's no bottoming pattern or signal out here. This is suggesting, and price keeps finding resistance at that red oscillator and change line. So, Flip, that's not really a great uh, scenario. Price could get all the way back to 77.57. So the weekly chart says, eh, I don't like that. Looks pretty ugly. Monthly chart's got the top, but support is held. The daily chart actually has a bottom. So you've got a roads momentum indicator bottom that formed out here a couple of days ago with the gap to the upside. But price is running the resistance out here. Flip, see the resistance at the 109.53 area? That is the top of its daily profile. So you know where the battle is to the upside. It's right there. 109, 109.53. Now, price may be pulling back to the 103.31. Maybe it's even 100.22. Uh, but uh, what, what you want to watch with regard to, so I'm going to have to do this off the screen. What I mean by that is the swing point low flip is a trading day of uh, May 20th that had volume of 2.1 million shares. The high of that bar is 102.01. The low of today's bar is 105.34. So you'll want to watch if price is pulling back into that uh, swing point with more than 2.1 million shares, that's going to suggest lower price coming at you. Now, that's the daily time frame. As we take a look at uh, Teradyne on the other intraday charts out here, just looking for anything of importance. So 130 minute TD9 count top, but support is held at 106.40. So short term bullish out there. 65 minute chart, TD9 count top. Same with the 30 minute, same with the 15 minute chart. Now, the 15 minute formed a TD9 count bottom. We're seeing a bounce from here. 
prices above its uh, top of its profile, we should should see a further bounce. Bounce to where? I'd say about the 107.86 area would be a, a good target to a uh, as far as a move to the upside. So, bottom line out here with regard to. Uh, Teradyne is really going to be that 109.53 level. If price can go close above that, then you're off to the races. Those races would take you to 113.43. If you close above 113.43, then you, oh, uh, then you're yeah, then you're on the way to higher price, 131.37 or so. So I hope that helps you out with regard. Oh, that was uh, shoot. I don't know. You know this this. I got to tell you, my uh, I think my phone updated and I do not like what it does out here. It takes these messages that I've got, and it just distorts the heck out of everything. Man, where'd that message go? I'll be a son of a gun. There was a request to take a look at two things. Oh, maybe that was David. He wanted to also look at Newmont Mining, which I didn't do that. So that's what we've got going on on Terra Data. I believe you had another question on iPhone, and I tell you, it's really screwed up. It could just be you know, it's an iPhone 10. It should be okay, but it is. Uh, if I said it's screwed up, that's an understatement. Out there, I'm just not you know, I'm just not that big on you know, giving Apple another thousand bucks for basically a phone. Uh, any, and there we go. Okay, Let's skip over this. Um, uh, so we're waiting for Newmont Mining here to populate. If you give me a moment, I think there was also another question inside the Tiger's Den. Um, T E R, please. I don't know. Maybe Major Eight Co. I don't know what that means, so I don't think that's for me. Uh, okay, Nat. Now, okay, thank you. So we take a look at Newmont Mining out here. Man, oh man. No, that's not. That's N E M. Jeez, what, what? What's new? N E M. Let's get the proper symbol up there. It's going to make it much easier for me to. I, I know it's really tough for you folks when I. Uh, I'm talking about one chart or set of charts, and I'm on the wrong screen. And, of course, you're looking at yourself sideways saying, what's he talking about? It's even worse when I type in the incorrect symbol. So, Newmont Mining, what do we have out here? Monthly time frame, our price is held support. Support is the top of its monthly profile. For Newmont Mining, that level is 66.23. No topping pattern as we speak right now. On the... Uh, Weekly time frame, you do have wave number seven. That was the top that was out there. That's letter G. Um, uh, and uh, price is pulled back and it's below the bottom of that weekly profile. So old support becomes resistance. We saw that last week. That is 69.83. No bottoming pattern or anything out there. The daily time frame, we take a look at Newmont Mining. Uh, was there an A to B equal C to the downside? Visually, to me, it looks like the answer is no. We'll draw the A to B leg. And what I mean by no is I mean it just simply hasn't hit the one-to-one -one price target. But let's see. Stevie's eyes could be misleading. That would be – no, it's, they weren't that misleading. So, no, I don't see a bottoming pattern. But price is above the top of the profile. And price was testing the top of the profile today. And that level is 67.34. So it may have bottomed just without one of the patterns that I use to help us identify bottom signals out there. So if price can hold that 67.34 level, things remain bullish. So 195-minute chart did top with a TD9 count pattern. Price has pulled back to its oscillator and change line. If 67.03 doesn't hold, look for a move to about the 65.51 area. Nothing else really of significance on the other intraday charts out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, David, in uh, Tomball, Texas. Your question on Newmont, is it a confirmed ABCD down on a weekly basis? I will answer that question for you when we get back to this break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LL. 
LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, all folks. We've got the weekly chart for New Out Mining up on my screen right now. Now, David from Tomball, Texas, is asking the question, is this a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside? And the answer there is clearly no. Why is that? Well, in order to be a confirmed pattern, and we'll talk about A to B equals CD, you've got to at least pass the B point of the A to B equals CD to the downside. Well, the B point out here was established the week of, the week that began, May 16th. So, Dave, in order to get a confirmed A to B equals CD, one, you need to see it close below that low, that's 63.68, and you'd like to see it done with more than 29.4 million, 29.5 million shares out there. It could turn into an A to B equals CD downside, but your question was, has it? And the answer is no. What it has done, though, it does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. What do you mean, Steve-O? Well, your A point out here is going to be the low from March the 16th. So let's go put this in here. The B point is all the way out here. It's the high that came in on May 17th. That high had volume of about 51 million shares. And when it was passed, it was passed with 60 million shares. Now, the C point is going to be the low from November the 29th. That also sets up a nice little trend line out there. I mentioned that the B point, which was from May 17th, 51 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed the week of March 7th, 60 million shares. So actually, what Newmont Mining has is a confirmed weekly A to B equals CD pattern that suggests price will take a move up to, excuse me, the 94, 91 level out there. So I hope that helps answer your question about the A to B equals CD pattern. If it doesn't, my apology. We'll continue to work at that uh, for you. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den. And the question there was to take a look at Nordic American tankers. So let's go switch uh, charts out here. We'll go see what Nordic American tankers, tankers is doing. The monthly time frame chart, not much, consolidating with inside its monthly profile. And that's between the ranges of, at the bottom, 159 at the high 276 out there. So just a little good old fashioned consolidation. On the weekly chart, what do we have here? You've got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. 
It's still in play right now, but price is below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. This is week number one, so that's not really that good. It may be price might be targeting the February lows out there. That is a possibility for sure. The daily time frame says, hey, not so fast, guys and gals. I just formed bar number eight of a TD9 count. And if tomorrow for Nordic American tankers, price closes below 221, you're trading at 204 right now, you will get bar number nine. You will have a TD9 count bottom right at about, just above perhaps, TD9 count breakout support of a buck 88. And that suggests then we should at least see a bounce in Nordic American tankers and that price target would be the oscillator and change line currently at the 235 level. So let's uh, tip, pull this back here. So the weekly, monthly says consolidation with inside profiles. Weekly says, I got a bottom, but you don't like being below the bottom of its weekly profile, but it's only Wednesday. Uh, the daily says, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to attempt to form a TD9 cow bottom that should be completed by uh, Friday um, of this week. By the way, on Friday, I'm going to do the show, record the show, I should say, between 8 and 9 in the morning out there. So please join me, join us then. 130-minute uh, chart, nothing much there. 65-minute has a Rhodes Mentum indicator and TD, nine-count bottom. So if this is not a counter-trend rally, you will see a close above 207. Does it have to close above 207 today? No. But if it tests 207 and backs off, that would not be what you're looking for. You're looking for a close above 207, and then that should take us to higher ground out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at Nordic American tankers. Looks like it's trying to form a bottom that could take place between today and and uh, Friday of this uh, week out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much. This was my question, Steve, ABC. This was my question premise, Steve. How about Nordic American takers? Total disconnect. They're making 3x daily shipping rates versus uh, last year, yet the stock is back to low end of the range levels. Yeah, I, so fundamentally, uh, Dan, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about that marketplace, so to speak. And the, for me, the most fundamental pattern out there is what are buyers and sellers doing and that's what you're an expert at um you know that's what that's what we do out here is try to take a look at you know with a number of different matrix uh we don't we don't exclusively use one you don't hear me speak about one single tool and that like the be all to end all now i wish i had one single tool that was the be all to end end all um, and I don't. So what we have here is just a matter of we use these technical patterns. We watch what buyers and sellers are communicating to us. Many times we don't fundamentally understand that. You're asking that question today. We had Matt uh, yesterday was asking questions about the FTSE out there. And I thought about Matt's question about the FTSE a little bit more. You know, the FTSE in the UK, right, with Brexit and all, we know that we know that uh, you're – Everyone in Europe is concerned, or trader-wise, anyone with dollars or what have you, especially when you've taken a look at the euro, which we believe has formed at least a short-term bottom out there. Uh, but uh, money's got to flow somewhere, and it flows where it has confidence. And so, you know, maybe people are going into the FTSE. Uh, we know people are going to the U.S. dollar, which is not really what we want to see because people go into the U.S. dollar, when I say people – sovereign entities and so forth, maybe people too, but uh, there's always a rush and move into the U.S. dollar before war starts, like World War One, World War Two. Mm, question mark, World War Three out there. So again, we're just paying attention to what buyers and sellers are doing. Right now, you know, what we're seeing is we're seeing global capital flows go into the U.S. dollar in a, a big way out there. So um, yeah, I can't answer that question for you, Dan. I get the question. I just don't have a way to answer it, but uh, it does look like uh, to the extent that uh, the fundamental aspect is what you're saying uh, leads you to saying you want to be a uh, be a buyer out there. Well, then, you know, look for this TD nine count bottom to form um, really want to let bar number nine complete tomorrow, um, I would say. And then, you, you know, 188 would be a nice uh, entry. I don't know that we're going to get that. Uh, we're 204, so we could. But um, so I guess that's how I would put it together. You've got a good fundamental reason to look for a bottom pattern inside of Nordic American tankers. And this is the best one that I can find right now. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Steve, while we're on tankers, can we take a look at uh, Sting? I'd love to hear some of Sting's music out there, STNG. But instead, we'll go take a look at the ticker symbol, STNG. And the question is, where would you see this move higher getting to? So let's wait for this to uh, populate out there, this being the charts, and then we'll try to answer that question. And it looks like quite a run out there. So the answer to your question is real simple, 4045. So that, that's what I say right now. And 4045 is its TD9 count breakdown level that comes from the monthly chart. Now, the problem there, 
is that the folks on the weekly side are saying, hey, they're waving your hand. They're saying, hey, um, uh, I just formed or I am forming a TD nine count top that should complete this week because it's the bar following bar number nine. So here's what you've got to take a look at. Whatever this week's high is, and I don't know what it's going to be so far on Sting or STNG, the high has been 35.65, but it could have a higher high. Whatever that high is, I'm not saying sell. And I'm not saying sell because I don't have the signals that say sell other than the weekly chart says be careful. Now, the beauty of that TD9 count pattern is if we see a close above a TD9 count, especially the following week, tells you about strong momentum move to the upside. And that would then get you the 40-45 level. Otherwise, anticipate some type of retracement. Now, you would likely see the daily time frame tie into the weekly time frame. The week has got a top. We should see a top on the daily. Today is going to be bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says you could get a topping signal between tomorrow, Thursday, and next Tuesday. That ties into the weekly time frame chart out there. In all instances, price are above. Price is above. They're green offset on change lines daily and weekly. So that is still a very strong momentum move to the upside. I don't see anything else here in the charts to be concerned. The 30-minute chart does have a TD9 count top. It says you could see a short term top up here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, folks so uh we got about two minutes here to wrap things up uh the wrap up uh let's go take a look at 
you know, things to really pay attention to today. And I think one of those elements to pay attention to is going to be that spot volatility. So let's go take a look at it. I believe there was some requests to take a look at that in the early stages of the show anyways. And really the key level out here to be paying attention to, granted, you got equity futures, US, uh, SES mini futures are off 35 points right now. But the spot volatilinix has tested and rejected that 50-day exponents moving average. And as long as that condition remains out there, the bulls are the ones with the ball in their hands. I mentioned about a new profile that is attempting to form on the daily time frame. You can sort of see it on the very right-hand bottom chart out there. The top of that profile is at 4,004. The center is at 3,965, and the bottom is at 3,886. When when a profile forms below price, and again, we won't know until 6.01 this evening if it has taken shape out there, but when a profile forms below price, that is a bullish message out there. When a profile forms above price, it's a bearish message. It's not that price can't back, get back into the side of those profiles. But what I'm delivering to you or what the markets are or the charts are delivering to us is that the 50-day expense moving average so far prices test and rejected that level. That level, by the way, just so you know, end of the day, this really means where is it at the end of the day, not at 1.55 p.m. 27.37 is the number. If price closes below that, condition still remain bullish. Now, what's going on is the market has to work on that extremely overbought condition. As we mentioned, the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator on Friday closed at a 337 level. Folks, that it's only been up at that area like five times going back to 2000 and going back to, to, to the beginning, basically, out there. So extreme oversold conditions doesn't mean it's a market top. It means it has to work off that condition. So when you put that together with spot volatility index, this is suggesting we could be seeing the B to C could be seen the B to C of an A to B equals CD pattern. Well, we'll know more tomorrow on Terrific Thursday, but stay tuned, folks. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will bring us on home. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. You have a wonderful